Welcome to the Xilinx Power Estimator Quick Take video. In this video, we will demonstrate the capabilities of XPE and help you get started with this tool. XPE is a spreadsheet-based power estimator tool that helps you estimate power at the pre-implementation stage when there is no or incomplete RTL design. Based on the design inputs, it provides power and thermal estimates to help you design your boards and cooling effectively. The tool is widely used for architecture evaluation, device selection, power supply planning, and thermal modeling. While it's primarily used in the pre-design and pre-implementation phases, some users prefer to use XPE in the post-implementation phase to do a what-if analysis. For such cases, XPE can receive utilization information from Vivado and ISE. Once the data is imported, you can experiment on your design without actually re-implementing you can download XPE from the link shown on your screen or the uh, link in the description section of this video. Now let's get started with a quick tour on how to set up the tool. Setting up XPE requires two distinct steps. Configuring the physical attributes such as device and environment and describing the design in terms of its components. Let's look at each of these now. The first step is to pick the right device and package in XPE. Pay careful attention to the temperature grade and process settings. The temperature grade setting determines the operating range of the device and the max static power. For instance, the industrial grade in uh, 7 series FPGAs has a temperature range of minus 40 to 100 degrees Celsius and has about 65 to 70 percent of the static power of a commercial part. The process setting will help you determine the worst case and typical case device static power changes due to manufacturing process variations. Once you've set the device portion, the next step is to configure the environment to accurately reflect your actual device setup. Some key settings include the ambient temperature in which the device is operating, the airflow that will be available, the profile of the heat sink, and finally the board selection. Notice that there are settings for advanced users to directly specify the junction temperature of the device and the effective thermal resistance. Junction temperature settings will override any ambient temperature settings specified. The effective thermal resistance setting is useful if you're unable to model the thermal conditions with the settings provided in XPE. The final setting to specify is the implementation setting. If you've used Vivado and are unaware of which power optimization setting you'll be using, you can specify it here. If you're unsure, it's best to leave it in the uh, power optimization setting. For more details, please watch the quick take video on Vivado power optimization. Now that we've set up the physical attributes, let's see if we can specify the design characteristics in XPE. The first and easiest way to specify the design is through the Quick Estimate dialog. Click on the Quick Estimate button on the top of XPE. This dialog gives a very quick overview of the major inputs needed. You can specify the design utilization, the activity, as well as the physical interfaces. Note that specifying the inputs in this dialog will overwrite everything in XPE. Naturally, this approach provides the coarsest grained way of providing inputs to XPE. It's recommended that it's followed by some fine tuning, and we'll illustrate that next. The second option for adding design information is by reviewing each tab at the bottom of XPE and providing the necessary information. For example, let's look at the logic tab. As a result of our quick estimate dialog entry, there's already a line item called system running at 250 MHz using 150k LUTs and 300k registers. Let's assume the design has 500 shift registers. All you have to do is enter that value here. Similarly, you should review the other tabs and ensure that additional details are specified there. So if you're interested in adding some IP, XPE provides a simple wizard which helps you create and add them. So select the IP Manager tab and click on Manage IP. You'll notice that the Manage IP tab already has a few IP in there. These are created when we use that quick estimate dialog. If you want to delete an XPE generated IP, you can do so by selecting that IP and clicking delete. You can also export this IP for another XPE design or import this design as well. But for now, let's click the Create IP tab. You can configure and create block and distributed memory as well as many memory interface protocols like DDR3 and transfer protocols like PCIe, GIGI, and Aurora. The final option to enter design info into XPE is by importing design data from either Vivado or ISE. 
If you generate an XPE file from these tools, you can then use the import file option to get that data into XPE. To learn more about generating this XPE file, please watch the uh, Vivado Quick Take video on power analysis. The design activity specification plays a key role in determining the power consumption of the FPGA. Users can set the activity in the Quick Estimate Wizard, as we saw earlier, or through the Set Default Rates button on the summary sheet. This dialog gives you a simple coarse grain way for specifying activity for the entire design. However, note that this may not be how your design actually operates. So it's best to visit the individual tabs and review the entries to fine tune the activity rates there. More on that later. So once you've input the entire design and environment details, we're ready to review the results. The summary section at the top of the spreadsheet gives you a quick overview on the power numbers as well as thermal properties. The on-chip power section below it goes into the next level of detail. It gives a resource-by-resource -resource breakdown of the power consumption. Notice that clicking on each button will take you to the corresponding tab to see a more detailed breakdown of power consumption. An alternate way of looking at power breakdown is through the voltage trails. The uh, power supply section shows the voltage at which each rail operates and the current drawn by each rail. Another cool feature in XPE is the snapshot feature. So let's say you're experimenting with your design and you want to understand the impact of the process settings on the power numbers. You need to set the process, say maximum in this case, write down the power value, then change it to typical, write down the power, and so on. Now if you forgot to write down a parameter for one of those scenarios, you'll have to go back and reset those settings again. But with the snapshot feature, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Set up XPE and go to the Snapshot tab, then click on Snapshot. It registers all the key parameters here. So let's call this current snapshot as MP for max process. Now move to the next setting, typical process, and take another snapshot. When you're done, you can compare all these settings in one page. To get the best possible power estimates, it's critical that you model the design accurately. Fine-tuning the settings will improve the correlation with hardware dramatically. Now, there are two key ways in which you can fine-tune the settings to accurately model your design. The most important ones are the toggle and enable rate settings found in the clock, logic, and BRAM tabs. Accurately modeling the rates based on your knowledge of the design goes a long way in getting accurate power estimates. The second key area to review is the settings for the GT tab. Check to see if the power mode and data rates are modeled correctly. Help is around the corner in XPE. If you need an explanation on specific entries, look to see if it has a red triangle on the top corner of the cell. If it does, you can hover over that and get immediate help. The second option is to review the Xilinx Power Estimator user guide. A link to this is provided in almost every tab. The third option would be open up a web case. XP is very useful to estimate power and cooling requirements for your design. You can easily specify the design through Quick Estimate and IP Manager wizards and get power estimates by on-chip components or voltage rails. You can also do what-if analysis as well as side-by-side -side comparisons using the snapshot capability. That concludes our demonstration of the Xilinx Power Estimator tool. Thanks for watching.